こんにちは、マイライトストーリーライブへようこそ。Hello, and welcome to my life story live. Today, we are joining you from the Tokyo Temple Visitor Center. We have an opportunity today where we've invited two guests and people having, having them speak. We believe that everyone has a God given talent or trait, however small they are. でも、人生が真っ暗に思えるときや、自分の中に光を見出せないときがあります。There are many things that happen in life that we can't expect. We believe that our guests have overcome many difficult challenges and found the light just as we have. May each of the My Light stories illuminate your hearts and make you aware of the light that is hidden within you. We hope that your light may shine. So、guide someone else's way. Now, in this venue, we are taking a social distance with a small audience to prevent the transmission of the new type of coronavirus. Our special guest today is the Kishi couple. Now, then, Mr. and Mrs. Kishi, let me introduce them to you. Eiji and Nobuko have raised. Seven boys and three girls. During the course of raising their children, they faced various difficulties such as a fire in their house, the Kumamoto earthquake, and Nobuko's hospitalization. But each time they overcame these difficulties by working together as a couple and as a family, they have given more than 900 lectures based on these experiences. When publishing Nobuko's book, Jam Packed Happiness, they were able to raise over 970,000 yen, far exceeding their goals. And on May 21st of this year, the local television documentary series that has covered their family life for the last 21 years is scheduled to be released nationwide as the film The Drive of Life. That concludes their introduction. Thank you very much for your patience. We would like to turn the time over to Mr. and Mrs. Kishi. Mr. and Mrs. Kishi, please. Hello, everyone. I am Kishi from Kumamoto. I have really been looking forward to talking to you today. My husband and I were married 39 years ago in the Tokyo Temple, which is next door to the building we are in. Next year will be our 40th anniversary, so we were hoping to come here next year to commemorate the occasion. However, we are delighted to be able to come a year earlier and expectedly. I love to talk, so I will try not to talk too much. First of all, I would like to tell you a story from a long time ago. Both of my parents worked, so I was the grandma's child. I used to call her Grandma Grandma, and I adored my grandma, but my grandma's name was Tetsu, and our neighbors called her Otetsan. Otetsan. My grandma was a very open minded person. She had many friends in many places and took me to many places. She took me a temple, then to a shrine, then to church, and I always followed her there. She loved daffodils very much. Whenever there were lots of daffodils in bloom, she would pick them, fill buckets full of them, and give them to the neighbors. Whenever she went to give daffodil flowers, I would follow her and hand them out to the monk at the temple, the Shinto priest at the shrine, and the pastor at the church. They loved me, the little girl, very much as I went with my grandma. At various places, I would get sweets from people who would say, Oh, Nobuko, you also came. I enjoyed following her around and getting sweets from them. When I went to shrines, they gave me rice crackers. When I went to temples, they gave me manju. When I I went to church, they gave me chocolates, which was my favorite place. I used to go there often. I have one such memory of my grandma. 
I don't know what kind of school field trip you have, but when I was in elementary school, we lived in the countryside, so the ocean was just a short drive away. When I was in elementary school, our, our school field trip, or rather our fun day, was to go to clam digging. Have you ever done it? We dug with a rake and found a lot of clams and put them in a bucket and brought back home. That was a social field trip. When I was in the early grades of elementary school, we took the school bus to go clam digging for the first time. It was hard for children to get clam shells. There were many inedible shellfish other than clams, and most of the children ended up catching many of them. However, luckily, I happened to dig a hot spot and found many clams. I had a small bucket full of them and so happy to have so many clams that I think I was probably the best in my class. The teacher shared the clams she had taken with the children who couldn't get them. But I went home thinking that I was going to be praised for having picked a bucket of full of clams all by myself. I showed my parents, my grandfather and my grandmother that I had caught a lot. And when I showed my father, he said, you caught a lot. Your teacher gave them to you, right? I replied, I took them. Then I showed it to my mother and she said, oh, that's great, Nobuko. You got them from the teacher, didn't you? I said, no, I got them on my own. Then I showed them to my grandfather and said, Grandpa, look. He said, did you get them from your teacher? I was really small, but I felt frustrated and sad that they didn't believe me even though I was telling the truth. And I also felt a sense of loneliness that they didn't recognize me. So I said, Grandma, I really got them by myself. And Grandma turned to me, a young elementary school student, and said, heaven knows, I myself know, and otento sama the sun knows and watches and it will be all right nobuko i still remember that she said it in kumamoto direct but heaven knows i myself know otento sama which is the sun is watching over me so that's all right said my grandmother these words were of no comfort to me as a small child but somehow they left an impression on me even though i was a small child i kept the journal so i wrote those words words in my journal. Heaven knows, I myself know, and Otento Sama is watching over me, so it'll be all right. Even if no one is watching, and even if no one believes in me, the words Otento Sama, the sun is watching you and understands you, have remained with me since then, and I have remembered them from time to time. I became friends with the pastor and he gave me a Bible as I brought the daffodil flowers to the church with my grandmother. I loved reading books, so I read it right away. I read the Corinthians and other sections of the Bible and found the words easy to understand. I adore to become a kind of person in the Bibles. Therefore, I sometimes went to church. Since the small girl went to church alone, everyone loved me so much and we had fun gathering together. I didn't go all the time, but the Bible in my hand became one of the things I trusted in from then on. When I became a junior high and high school student, I graduated from high school and went to a junior college in Nagasaki. And soon after entering the junior college, I learned about this church called the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I began to learn a little about the church and I learned that Otento-san, as my grandmother used to say, in the Otento-san is watching over you, so don't worry about it, could be an ancestor to some people or a conscience to others. It depends on the person, but I came to know that Otento-san for me was God. It was very significant for me to know that even if others misunderstand me, there is someone who sees me properly no matter if I'm making my best efforts or not. 
and that there is such an existence. After graduating from a junior college, I got a job at a local company and became a regular office worker. While I was working as an office worker, there was a very popular song at the time. I don't know if this is appropriate to say here, but it was called An Affair in the Third Year of the Marriage. It was a song like a man cheats in the third year of his marriage and there's nothing he can do about it. I remember everyone singing the song in chorus at the welcome party. I heard so many negative comments about marriage from my bosses and my male colleagues. I was only 21 years old at the time, but they said marriage is a graveyard and you will get bored soon. And that made me have no dreams and hopes for marriage. But when I went to church on Sundays, there was always a world that was different from that world. It was very new for me. One time I was listening to a man, maybe 40 or 50 years old, who said, I love my wife more than when I married her. I was still really new to the church, but I had never heard a Japanese man say such a thing, so I felt a uhuh in my heart. It was new to hear someone from this world say, I love my wife more than I ever loved her when we were married. I thought there's another world here than the one I know. After spending a few years at the church, I had an experience that probably defined my life for the rest of my life. One day, there was a foreign leader in the church, a married couple, and I was listening to them. I couldn't tell his age clearly, but he looked to be in his 70s. The foreign leader said, I married my wife 30 or 40, probably 40 years ago in a place called a temple. At that time, I vowed to love only my wife. It has been easy for me to love only my wife for the past 40 years because and then he called his wife to come up on the stand and she got up from her seat and stood beside him. She was a little wife with pure white hair. Standing next to the leader, the leader said it was easy for me to love only her for 40 years and he put his hand around his wife's waist. She leaned in close and he said, because she was the one you couldn't help but love. At that point, I sobbed and thought, how wonderful, how wonderful, how wonderful. I thought I wanted to have such marriage too. Of course, that was long before I knew my husband, and I had no boyfriend, but I had a strong earring to be married like that someday. I was not really familiar with Dwar's temple marriage, but I had a strong earring to have such a marriage where we would pledge our eternal love in a temple within the church. And a few years later, I met Eiji. Excuse me, I met this man, and here we are today. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I love to talk, but I'm pretty bad at organizing my thoughts. I'm really good at uh, having fun with my thoughts. Uh, when talking about uh, church-related topics, it's very easy for me to uh, feel, uh, cry because of my feelings. I feel like a lot of times when I cry, but every time that I talk, I, I always find myself crying. I feel like I'm a crybaby. I used to really hate being a crybaby. So I thought when I uh, joined the church that nobody would ever want to talk to me again. So I wanted to fix that part of myself. I wanted to stop being a crybaby. And so there was a lot that I tried. 
子供の頃にお姉さんたちが。When I was a kid, my his older sister told me that I cried because of this mole that was under my eye. And that if I managed to take it off, that I could stop being a crybaby. My plastic surgery fee was free. I did it myself. I heated up some metal tongs on the stove and then I took it. And I uh, gritted my teeth and I said goodbye to being a crybaby. And I grabbed it with the tongs and I pulled the mole out. And then a week later, I took out the underlying part. And I look how beautiful my face is. It was a wonderful success.、And、I was so happy. I was so convinced that I could stop being a crybaby because of this. But it didn't happen. But, but that's how much I disliked that part of myself. That I was able to do something that hurt so much. And I wanted to stop being a crybaby. But when I decided to、uh, learn to love that I was a crybaby, I, I cry even when I'm watching television. You know,、so、I'll tell my wife, ask him, Are you crying? Like, yeah, of course I'm crying. Yeah, or how can you not cry? It's a part like this. Whenever there's a testimony, cry. I can feel how could God love us so much? That's my personality. I feel so happy whenever I see something good or something in the world. Cry easily. And、that's just who I am. I always cry and I laugh and I'm happy. And I feel that that is a talent that I've received from God, a gift that I've received. Even now, I can feel I'm about to cry. I really feel like I'm able to help a lot of people with it. I'm able to be able to say it to everybody that I love everybody. Everyone's different. But I love all of them. And we cry together. How happy we are that we're able to spend time together. <laughs> even when,、uh, so, even when one of the people I'm working with hits you on the back of the head, normally you feel somebody like, pokes you on the back of the head with a pencil. But, Even with days like that, because I'm a crybaby, because I have these strong emotions, I feel it's easier for me to learn to love them. Let's feel, you know, that's not much at all. Feel, you know, we were born to feel joy. But I really feel like. Can all be happy. And I know that we can all feel, have the power to make somebody else happy, whether it's somebody who has obstacles in their life. We can the thing I'm most happy about, though, is I was able to get married to my wife. After I joined the church, it, was about, it took about seven years that I、uh, kept、uh, being rejected. Falling in love after joining the church. There was a lot. I have no regrets. I told the people who I liked that I liked them. I feel like being honest is my special talent. That's. And I was able to understand that that was my talent after joining the church. Be like being able to walk, that's a kind of gift. Being able to decide what's good and what's bad. Isn't that also a gift? I feel like there are lots of people who aren't able to decide, even when the options lie in front of them. And I feel that I've really received many gifts from God. You know, being able to cry, being able, or being able to cook, being able to think that the food is delicious. Those are all talents. I really think that. And I want to be able to use those gifts to help other people. 
want to take time. The person I want to use the help the most is right here. Yeah, she's, uh, I feel like she's not here that I'll get in a bad mood. Sometimes I see that her uh, putting preference to my children or my grandchildren over me, and I get jealous. I wonder if that is concerned, but I love her. <laughs> when we first got married, I can honestly say that I married him by process of elimination. I married this man because he told me he loved me so much. And at first I thought I was, I'm the one who accepted his offer to marry him. I had so many ideals too. I had been in the church for a long time. So I started from day one of our marriage, wanting to read the scriptures together every day, praying together, doing this and doing that together. I told him that we should read together and we would read one verse at a time taking turns. Then he would read the same verse over and over. And I thought, huh? I looked at him and his eyes were closed. Also in other time, I felt something very good that day. So I prayed for quite a long time. I was praying very hard and sincerely. Then I heard a bang and saw my husband lying on the floor. He was sleeping on his knees. I, wasn't sick. I was disappointed to see that. And to be honest, there were times when I was discouraged because he often dozed off during church meetings. In early marriage time, I saw many shortcomings and felt his inadequateness. Then one day, my husband was called to be a counselor in a branch presidency. This is one of the leadership responsibilities in our church. I firmly believe that church leaders were also a person who was almost perfect. I thought it would be a man of great character. So I thought, what? I honestly thought, how could my husband who sleeps so much and doesn't read much scripture be the one? But he became a counselor. He got to sit on the stand, but he was sleeping up on the stand. I couldn't listen to what the speakers were saying, but I sent him telepathy saying, wake up, wake up. But he was still sleeping up there and I couldn't concentrate on anything else. I just wanted to wake my husband up. I kept sending him telepathy, wake up, wake up, but he was the kind of person who wouldn't wake up. So I sometimes wondered if he is adequate or if someone like him could be a leader. But then I remembered grandma's words mentioned at the beginning, it's all right because Otento san is watching over you. I realized that although my husband may be lacking in some areas from my point of view, there are many more good things about him that I do not know, but he does. I gradually came to understand that God calls this person to be a leader because he knows that there are many good things about him. The big difference between my husband and I is that I am an armchair theorist. I was a person who only thought uh, knowledge very hard, and I was a person who only had ideals. For example, I know 10 good things, but I can only do three, but my head is full of the 10. I know that my husband knows only three things, but he works very hard on those three things. He is an amazing doer. He has a lot of things that I don't have, so I was getting more and more inspired by him. I thought I was the one who accepted his offer to marry him, but after a while, I came to truly feel that he is the one who married me. My life has changed a lot once again since we had children. I grew up thinking that my personality was mild, gentle, and meek. In fact, I didn't get angry very often. But it was not until I had children that I realized I had a temp temper. After having the first three children one year apart and one after the other after, that I raised my voice that I had never done when I was single. I told you not to touch them. I was surprised at my own voice and my life became really busy. There were many difficult things in that situation, but my husband began to give me good and appropriate advice from time to time. 
it was not grand or anything but for example as a young mother i was having a hard time to have our babies drink milk and i was thinking he won't drink it again then my husband said to me maybe he doesn't want it i thought what i had never thought a baby would choose not to drink and i had always thought that babies who are supposed to drink so when he said even adults sometimes want it and sometimes don't want it this experience helped me to learn and also for example there are times when the kids would come home after playing outside in the mud the kids went to a nearby park to play after it rained and they came back covered in mud they came back covered in mud and i thought wow but if i had been the first to respond i would have said oh no what did you do but my husband happened to be at home on that day. He went out first and said, wow, that must have been fun. If it had been me, I would have said, oh my gosh, go wash your feet. But the whole time he was talking to the kids about how much fun they had, he asked them, what did you do for fun? They replied them after it rained. There was a pub puddle under the slide. So we went head first into it and played like a water slider. While they were talking more and more, more mud was falling but when he said well then go wash your feet the kids happily said yes and went to wash at that moment i thought how brilliant if it had been me i would have said to the kids why on earth you did then i think they would have washed their feet sobbing without a chance to tell us how much fun they had but since my husband asked them how much fun they had eventually the kids went to wash their feet happily when we got in the car and headed for the church there's a street car running in kumamoto city the kids would stick their heads out the window and i would say it's dangerous but he said what do you see and the children would say i see this and that then my husband said it's dangerous so now it's time to put your heads in kids would put their heads in at best he is a person who understands the children's feelings very well and at worst i am the one who has to clean dirt no matter how dirty they get so he does whatever he wants well there is no end for what i can remember but for example when i had three older children and then the other two were born there were a total of five children back then the oldest was always crying and whining as we walked together i was carrying one on my back and another in front and pulling two other kids hands on my both sides so my oldest son had to walk alone and he was crying and his father said you can you must be tired and i thought little children don't get tired but he said shall i give you a piggyback right then he happily said yes he stayed on his back for a while but before he, we walked 100 meters he himself said you know i can walk and started walking on his own when it was dinner time and i was busy cooking the children were always asking mom read us book and i said i cannot do that but my husband reads to them right away i learned from him that if we do what they want us to do they wouldn't whine that much i was jealous of him at the time and thought that's not fair i was taking care of the kids from morning to night and it's easy for him to be nice to them if it's only a short time when he was at home but i learned a lot from him through that we gradually learned to adjust to each other's needs that's how it was go ahead and continue <laughs> There's a lot of things that I like to do. But I think it's just as she said. There's a lot of things that are fun in life. Yes, why there's so much that I like? I thought before I got married that there's no way that we could be together forever. I thought that I have to love her more. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to. And so I wondered what I could do. I mean, it's forever, right? Forever. Just the two of us. What are we going to do? Mm. Not forever. But now I feel like I can, I know just a little bit. Really didn't know what I could do. But I decided on three things to do. First was to uh, not say mean things. Just to say nice things in the house. The second thing was to not get mad. 
I'd like to get mad. I wanted to make sure that pe other people didn't think I would get mad. And then the third. This is one thing is that Japanese people might not do this, but also. I've done it today too. Oh, wait, have I not said it today? Forty years. Or thirty-nine years. There are times that we fought. They used to say leaders have said before that we need to tell our wives that we love them three times a day. So we used to say it when I leave in the morning. You say right when you wake up, right? And then in the middle of the day when you call them, and then in the evening, and then when you before you go to sleep, five times. I say at least five times. So, at least three times. Then you can feel in your head that you love this person. And that feeling is real. You can, and you can be sure of it because you're saying. And you can feel, the other person can feel that you've accepted them. I feel that of course, you can uh, feel perhaps that because you're married that they love them, but it's important to say it. To say it nope. Even if we're family, it's important not to say it to anybody. They're stupid. You can think, you know, I think it's really weird that uh, when, my, when my mom would always say, you know, you're an idiot. But, I don't think there's anybody who's really an idiot. <laughs> but maybe I did some stupid things. But never say that anything's an idiot. You don't, don't say mean words. You have been here close to 40 years, but you haven't. And then, not getting mad. That's a, that's a hard one. You get grouchy when you're hungry, right? Yeah. <laughs> if, uh, if you feel like the other person is paying attention to you, then you get grumpy. But you work hard at it. And I, you're able to feel like you've got a good relationship. But I feel like I've been able to apply what the church has taught me over this Perhaps sometimes I come home from work and there's dinner not ready. And you wonder, you know, why could this happen? That might be the first thought that comes to your mind. Like, what were you doing? But you can't say that. So what do you say? You say that, oh, dinner's not done yet? Great, that means I can help. When I first told to do that, I, you know, it was hard. But, but being able to help out with everything. It's important to do things to make the other person happy. Oh, I can feel the tears coming. But I feel like that's gotten me, us through. And so what I've thought is that it's important to say what you really feel. Really, you know, perhaps I was happy if the something was already ready. But, but it's uh, really, I want you to be happy. It's important to say those things. That part, let me just say, because you don't probably don't remember, AJ, so. I was raised rather strict by my parents, so I was a woman who made a lot of excuses. Whenever someone pointed out something about me, I would first think of an excuse. It had become a habit. So one time I had a visiting teaching and various church events, so I said I would be home at 9, but it turned out to be around 10.30 or 11. 
I was living in an apartment complex at the time, and I was uh, climbing up the stairs, and I was thinking of about 300 excuses in my head. What excuses would I make so that I wouldn't get in trouble? I was thinking of all kinds of excuses, and my head was filled with them. I thought of excuses for being late, but when I came home and said I'm home, my husband came out, hugged me tightly, and said, I was worried about you. As soon as he said that, I started crying and said, I'm sorry, which was a very new experience for me. I realized how easy it is to make someone apologize. I had a habit of always thinking of excuses when my mother said something to me, but I learned from my husband that we could be honest in expressing our feelings. He said that his true feeling was I am worried about you, and he felt it was okay to express his true feelings, even though he sometimes felt upset because he had many feelings around that. But I am grateful to him for making an effort to do that for me and our children. I have told the story for you. Of course. Thank you. If you can say it. And if you can uh, say what you really feel, it's important to have this uh, priesthood meeting to get this meeting together with your friend. I heard from my family. My friend heard about this and was worried. Wait, if you're always worried about your family, then you can never relax. But no, by always thinking about your family, it becomes a joy. It's not something that is suffering. So, when you come home and you bring some flowers, even when it's not a birthday, and they ask why, you say, it's because I like you. <laughs> That's how you show that you care. On days when you feel like you worried them, and you buy some ice cream for them on the way home. I think that that's a great way to show that you care. So you think about your family all the time. <laughs> Important. And when you're married, <laughs> no. just a little bit. Can I talk a little? When we got married, I said my marriage was done by a process of illumination, but there is something that we have developed in 30 years, 39 years. Of course, there were times when we fought. And also, although he has told me that he loves me for 39 years, I cannot tell, tell you how many times he has not said it with his heart. There, there were times when he said, I love you with his mouth, but his eyes are angry. But I'm very grateful to him for continuing to say it. We come to understand each other without saying it to each other. There are so many things that couples really don't have to say to each other. There are many things that are understood without even bothering to tell the children that you love them. But the things that are understood without saying them are all things that make you happy when you say them to them. Therefore, I think it's important to say I love you out loud to each other and to tell our children that we love them. And if I may sum up, do you remember when I told you about the elderly couple I had a great admiration for when I was single to be able to stay? I got married to her 40 years ago and it was easy to love her for the 40 years of our marriage. That is my example we've been married for 39 years now and in japan we have a golden wedding anniversary which is 50th anniversary i have a vision for that time i don't know if you'll be alive by then but if we live to our 50th wedding anniversary in my vision our 10 children will hold a party for us and each of those children and each of their spouses and grandchildren three children per couple that's about 30 grandchildren, and they are going to sing and dance and have a good time. And I envision that my husband stands up to thank them. My husband would say, thank you all for coming today. Grandpa is happy to see everyone's happy faces in his usual tone. And then he would say, Grandpa married your mother 50 years ago at a place called Tokyo Temple. And at that time, I vowed to love only your, father, your mother. In this past 50 years, it has been easy to love her only. Then I would be cold and standing beside, then I would be cold and standing beside him. 
My husband would say it was easy for me to love only Nobu-chan for 50 years because and then we have to look at each other. And when we look at each other, my goal is to hear my husband say because she is someone you cannot help but love. I wonder how much effort the leader must have gone through in order to keep loving one person and how much effort it must have taken for his wife to keep being told that he cannot help but love her. So I want to make my best efforts to become a wife who my husband can say that about me. And I hope to be the kind of mother that my, chi my children will feel they cannot help but love. That is my goal. Let's make our best efforts. I went everywhere, but the time is up, so I would like to end. I will turn the time over to the moderator now. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Brothers. Thank you very much. I did not expect the time to pass so quickly. Every story just depicts how wonderful couple they are and it was really impressive and the story made me wish to be like you with my husband someday thank you very much with that we'd like to move into a few questions that have been asked uh, we aren't able to answer all of them, so please understand. Let me ask you the first question. Your family is big with 12 people. It seems difficult to take time together as a family, but what kind of efforts have you made to spend time together as a large family of 12 people? Well, efforts. It's difficult for us to go to special events or amusement parks due to financial constraints, but I think we have taken quite time to do things together. For example, it takes a little over an hour to drive from church to home. The kids have been taken to church by their parents since they were born, so you know, sometimes it's not fun. I thought about what what I could do to make it more enjoyable. So I said, let's go by bike. It takes me less than two hours to get from my house to the church by bicycle. But I put the kids on the front and back of my ordinary bike. My husband put the kids on his, the little ones on their 16 inch bikes. And we all rode our bikes side by side to the church. The kids were so happy and said, let's go again next week. Let's go again next week. And we could only do that occasionally because it was tiring for the parents. But it made it fun to go to church for them. And after the meetings, the parents would have something to do at church for a while and the children would be bored waiting. So we would stop by Ninomaru Park near Kumamoto Castle on the way home from church eat bento lunch there and so forth. There are small things, but I think it was a good time to spend together as a family. As we're uh, moving along, they'd always say quiz, quiz. And so we'd do a quiz as we were going. And you know, we didn't have TV back then. Yeah, back then we would lay down on the flat surface in a car and everyone would fall off of the cars and that's how it was in those days. So we had a lot of fun together. And so no matter where we were, we were able to have a good time. And I think that may have been one of my gifts. We didn't have a very big house. We had the, uh, we had the, our kitchen and the bedroom and living room all in one place. And, it was all and so, you know, we were always kind of stuck together. But, but, you know, even now when we have a bigger house, we wonder, why don't you go back to your room? You have one now. But, but we were able to have time where everybody was happy to be around each other. Thank you very much. All right, we'll move to the next question.
Even if there are differences or things that you have difficulties accepting about each other, how do you learn to respect each other and love each other after getting married? <laughs> that would be me then. We really have different tastes. I had only seen Western movies, but he only watched Torasan, typical Japanese movie. So our first date was also Ken Takakura's movie. It was classic. But we have different tastes in food, really different tastes. But we tried and understood with each other, little by little. What can I say? I think we have gradually developed that kind of thing. For example, he loves ramen and I don't like ramen and I really only need to eat it once every leap year. I don't like it as much, but he really likes it and wants to go. I don't like ramen, but we always go together instead of me not going. And he eats ramen and I eat white rice and dumplings and we have different tastes in movies. He likes the action movies, but I still go with him and we watch them together. I like musicals, so he always comes along and sleeps next to me. I go with him to see something that I don't like, but as we go together, I get over my dislikes of something I don't like and it becomes more interesting than I thought it would be. I think it was a good idea for us to try going together even though we have different tastes. Fundamentally, I really don't like being disliked by the person I'm with. But I like to do my best to be liked by if there's somebody that I don't like, or who doesn't like me, they're the people that I make the most effort to greet and to be friendly with. That's how it is. I really love Novako. So I want to get to know, and I want to make her happy. You love me, huh? Thank you. Thank you very much. The third question is about your underlying feelings of caring mentioned in previously. You said that you're, you express your feelings of caring instead of being upset, which is around the feeling of caring. How do you recognize such underlying feelings? Really, you know, even if there are little fights or little things, you wonder why those feelings come out. You know, you, they're, they're worried about why you're out late and why you won't come back. And it's because they're worried. So why are they worried? People don't worry about people that they hate. And so you know that she loves you. You know, it comes from a place of love, from a feeling of importance. And you can feel that she was angry because she was worried. You know, it's like your uh, children, you want them to succeed, you want to be together. Because the people who love you want you to be happy and want you to work with them. And so, you know, you know, children like to look at what they have interested in. And we're pretty different, but I really want her to be happy. And I think she does what she likes. But I think there's a lot of things that I'm not, that I haven't been able to enable her to do. Thank you very much. All right, this will be the last question. When do you feel the most love from the other person? We'd like to hear from each of you. Okay, let me go first. I feel love from him. It's not when he says I love you. I feel his love when he says it was delicious. I'm already used to hear him say I love you. <laughs> oh, he's gotten used to it. I guess it's really travel things. I feel your love when you say something like your bento lunch was delicious. Yep. <laughs> something I feel like 
I really don't feel that the uh, things that I'm eating are delicious and I'm you able know, to say when I feel it's one of the things we don't say because it's too obvious. Isn't no. it delicious though? Delicious. No, the, Novoko makes the best eggs. The first quarrel we had after we got married was about meal ethics. I was a really bad cook. My mother and grandmother were both really um, good cooks and I had only washed dishes. So I was not good at cooking. The first dish I made was oyakodon chicken and egg rice bowl and I still have, haven't gotten over it for this past 39 years. When we were eating together, my husband suddenly asked me, what is this? I thought, what? Before we got married, I had told him that I was a bad cook. My husband kept saying, don't worry, don't worry. But then he said, I thought you were just being humble, but you really are a bad cook. And I cried. He never says it again. But since then, 39 years have passed and I have become a good cook, haven't I? I really love People really do grow. I can feel yes. I, uh, my mom was good, so I thought that everybody was really good. So now people can change. Now tell them when you feel my love as a departing message. That's the question you were asked. When do you feel when my I love? When I feel love. I mean, I'm the happiest when I feel like she's accepted me. Um, before anything else, I'm able to feel that. And that when I'm having a hard time, she really helps me out. <laughs> that when, uh, and when she's worried, when she thinks, what if he wouldn't come back? And so when I come back, I'm able to give her some flowers. I love her so much that I can't even express it. And I'll say that yes, the food is delicious. I just want to say one last thing. We got married in a temple, but I really believe that just because you get married in a temple, it doesn't guarantee happiness. Step by step, a married couple will become a genuine couple, and it takes patience and efforts to do so, but it is worth doing it. I believe that marriage is worth all the effort and hard work that young people have to put in. So please have a happy marriage. I think you can make it a happy one. And there's a lot of things you can do to make it that way in your family. There are many opportunities to serve in the home. Sorry, I talk too much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for coming all the way from Kumamoto to Tokyo today. Thank you. Same to you too. I'm happy to be here. We're thankful to have the Kishi couple here, and we're thankful for everybody who joined us here today. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And see you again at the next live. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.